Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are here to talk about quarterly goals. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lakin and I talk all about goals and share my goal journey with you throughout the course of the year. And part of that is sharing with you the quarterly breakdowns I make of my annual goals. So I set overarching goals for the year. This year in 2021, I had six overarching goals. And then every quarter I've broken those goals down into smaller quarterly goals that allow me to really stay focused and then feel accomplished at the end of the quarter. So if you missed my last quarterly check-in, I talked about the five goals that I had set for Q2. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how they went. If you watch the monthly goal check-in videos, you probably have a pretty good idea of how they went. But in this video, I'll kind of rate them on a scale of one to 10, how each of those quarterly goals went. And then I will share my Q4 goals with you. I actually have eight goals for Q4. So my first Q3 goal was related to my overarching annual goal of focusing on our relationship, my relationship with my fiance, and our quarterly focus was to make progress on the wedding. I finally felt like going into Q3 that our wedding was actually going to happen. Um, some things have gone up and down since then, but I still actually feel mentally in a really good place that our wedding in March of 2022 is, is going to happen. And so I really wanted to make sure that I spent time in Q3 making making significant progress. I would give this one like an eight out of 10. There are a lot of things, especially the things that I wrote on here, like as the action steps that we checked off. Flowers are done. Guys attire is done. On-site plan is almost done. There's someone I actually thought wasn't going to be able to make it to the wedding that is going to make it and I'm trying to fit in. So I still have a little bit of Tetris thing to do with that. Hotel blocks are done. Like I just, I feel really good about our wedding progress there really wasn't anything that I was like, we have to get this done in Q3 that didn't get done. So honestly, maybe I give myself a 10 out of 10. The next quarterly goal was within the category of things that make me happy. I wanted to spend time this year doing things that made me happy. And one of those things is reading. And so my quarterly goal was to get my book notes all organized. And while the when I'm filming this video, I am not quite caught up. I am pretty close. I'm only a couple books behind and then I will be all caught up. When I first made this goal, I did not take into consideration the books I would read in Q3. I thought, well, if I do one book a week for the entire quarter, I'm going to do all the books I've read so far this year. And that is true, was true, but I also read a couple more nonfiction books. This is just for nonfiction books. I know I've also had a lot of questions in the comments to share my book notes system with you. It's not fancy. It's literally just bullet points and words. That's all it is right now. My goal, I actually, I'll talk about it a little bit in the October action steps goals video. There is something I'm going to try to get my book notes organized, but for this right now, it's literally just in word. So I feel like I did a pretty good job. This one, probably like an eight out of 10, cause I'm not quite there, but I still have a whole week left in the quarter, including a couple days off of my full-time job. So I should be able to get that one done. The next quarterly goal was also under the things that make me happy category. And that was to catch up on my 2021 memory keeping. And I probably will give myself like a three out of 10 on this one. I did more than zero. I did a couple of weeks. I probably did a total of like five or six weeks over the course of the quarter, which is progress but it's not even close to what I wanted to do. I wanted to do at least the current week and one past week for the entire quarter. And that like did, didn't even come close to happening. So this one I am carrying over into Q4, which we'll talk about almost exactly. The next quarterly goal was under the business category. So I do put all of my plan with Lakin goals in my power sheets. And the quarterly goal was to maintain my routines during the transition, the transition back to the office which didn't end up happening. So this goal ended up not even really being necessary. So I just kind of used it to like work and solidify my routines. I'd probably give myself like a seven or eight out of 10. I'm still struggling with my PM routine, which isn't directly related to my business, but it, it does make an impact. If I am good about my evening routine, it then impacts the next day, which indirectly impacts my business. That one I just need to keep working on. I also set these goals before I made the decision to try out for the dance company. If you have been following my vlogs or if you want to follow me on Instagram, I did join a dance company in August that has rehearsals twice a week, August, September, and October. And so that definitely shook up a lot of things in terms of routines and timing and all those kinds of things. So, you know, this goal didn't even really end up needing to be a thing. And I did not set a goal in the next quarter about transitioning and routines and getting back to the office because it is still all so up in the air. As of the time I'm filming this video, I have no idea when we're going back to the office. So right now I'm just not gonna worry about it. 
And then my last quarterly goal for Q3 was to lose weight. And the specific, well, the overarching yearly goal is to lose weight. The specific Q3 goal was to to join and participate in this program that I joined called No BS. And I would give myself maybe a seven out of 10. I did lose weight in Q3. I did do some of the program. I did not get through as much as I wanted to. It, it was busy. It was a busy three months and it's okay that I didn't get through it. I'm carrying that one over also pretty much directly into Q4, but I still feel really good about the progress I made in Q3 on the overarching annual goal of losing weight. Maybe I didn't do the quarterly goal to the best that I could have done it, but I'm making progress and I actually hit a major weight loss milestone in Q3 of this year and that felt really good. So overall, it was a really productive quarter. It was also, a, we had a lot of vacations, we had Sam's birthday, all of the dance. There were a lot of things that were part of Q3 that really made me very happy and feel very um, just good about things going on that isn't captured in my power sheets. And sometimes that's just how it is. So let's move on to Q4. Like I said, I have eight quarterly goals for Q4 because some of them are a little bit smaller and I really, I, I kind of just wanted to pull back in all of my annual goals. I let a couple of them go in Q3 um, because I felt like I had gotten to a good place with them and they're just, I want to finish out the year strong. So I have eight total goals. So two of my annual goals have two quarterly focuses. So let's start with the relationship goal and that is to plan our dream wedding. The quarterly goal from Q3 to Q4 isn't different. The reason I changed the wording on here is because I think that wording can have such an impact on the actions that you take. And so in Q3, I wrote make progress on wedding planning and that's exactly what we did and it was great. Now we are kind of down to the nitty gritty. There are way less big things related to wedding planning that we have to get done. We are down to little details and part of me just wants to be like, I forgot, I don't care about the little details, but I want to remind myself of what's important to us about this wedding especially since it got postponed. And what are those little details going to have an impact for us, for our guests? And let's make sure that we are still focused on planning the wedding of our dream. So the couple of things I wrote down here in terms of actionable steps are invites. That is a big thing, but has to get done in Q4. Finish the accommoda accommodations like I talked about, and then finalize our trip there in January. We're going to Texas in January to get our marriage license, and I'm doing my hair and makeup trial, dress fitting, like all kinds of things. And some of it I have scheduled, and some of it I do not. And so kind of finish finalizing that trip is another major action step. You'll also notice that there are lots of blanks on here. I don't fret about getting my all of my goals completely broken down to kick off the quarter. I don't feel the need to know every single step just to start taking action. Right now, I just need to get everything that's in my head out and onto this piece of paper and then have the next month planned. You might have noticed as we went through Q3 that I didn't add anything to those and I didn't go back and check things off. I find myself breaking down things as the quarter goes on on my iPad and not in my power sheet. So I still am doing something like this. It's just happening on my iPad. All right, the next quarterly goal, like I mentioned, I'm basically carrying over is to continue participating in that no BS program as part of my yearly goal to lose weight. So the couple things I jotted down was to continue the four basics. I talked about this in detail in last quarter's quarterly goals video. So if you missed that, I talked all about the program in that video. And then also to actually finish the courses that are on part of, part of the program. The next goal is under my annual goal of finances and the quarterly focus is just to get prepared for 2022. So this is a pretty small quarterly goal, but there's kind of two big action steps I want to make sure that I take in Q4 to set us up for success the next year. And that is to create the version, the 2022 version of our spreadsheet. And then also to have a conversation with Sam about our 2022 financial goals and what we're looking to do. And it kind of will also encompass a kind of a big picture goal, but we have a lot of big, financial things coming down the pipeline. And so I want to make sure that we are still on the same page. We had, we had a big conversation back in June of this year, which I talked about in a video. And so it's kind of just like a touch base and recap from that conversation. The next quarterly goal is under the category of home. And I did let this one go in Q3 because I felt like at the end of Q2, we were in a pretty good place with our apartment, but there's a couple last minute things that I really just want to get done. So I called the quarterly goal finish organizing. I don't know if that's 
quite the right word for it. Um, but there's just a couple decorative places in the apartment that I've been putting off. Like there's a picture frame that in our old apartment was horizontal and now it's vertical. And so the picture is sideways. So I need to get a new picture printed for that frame. It's not a big step, but just all of the little things that I can do to make sure our apartment is in its best shape and the, the, the best way that we want it to be and feel as we go into a new year. A lot of my quarterly goals are kind of like setting me up for success in 2022. So the things I wrote down are create the two buy list. Again, just a couple things. I need a basket for some blankets. Can the blankets just sit there folded? Yes. Would I like a basket for them? Yes. Um, so finish the list of all the things. Actually go shopping and buy those things. And then the last action item for this category is really kind of where organizing comes in. And that is to declutter a bit for things I'm going to take with me to Chicago in December. So I've mentioned this in a few places before. Our long-term plan is not New York City. I love New York um, and there's a lot of things that I really love about it, but being closer to family long-term as we start our own family is very important to us. So when we were moving, there were a couple things that I realized as we were packing that I don't want to get rid of, but I don't plan to use in the next couple of years. One of those examples is my Mima's wooden stamp collection. Um, that was like the one thing that she like specifically left for me and they're so precious to me. And one day I hope to be able to pull them out with my kids and craft and do all the things. But right now they are just sitting in two plastic storage bins and they don't need to necessarily be taking up space in our current apartment. Um, and there's a couple other things that kind of fall into that category. Sam has some stuff too, that just like, we just moved from like hidden storage in the old apartment to hidden storage in this apartment that I would rather get out of our apartment and free up a little bit of space to breathe in this apartment and have it in the storage unit that my mom has in Chicago. So she has a storage unit that she got when she downsized from the suburbs to the city that has some extra space. So what is the plan is my mom and sister are actually gonna fly to New York in December and we're gonna have a girls weekend here in the city. And then we're gonna drive, the three of us are gonna drive a rent car back to Chicago with all of these things that we can stick in the storage unit. So one of the things I need to do this quarter is make sure I go through the apartment and get all that stuff together that I want us to drive back to Chicago. So that's a lot of explaining, but that's really the driver for this quarterly goal. Okay, the next two goals are both Plan With Lakin business related. And the first one is to create a group goal coaching program. So if you are new here, or even if you're not, I have launched a lot of things over the last year, year and a half. We have a Patreon community that I absolutely cherish and love. The Patreon community for me is about that community feel and being able to support each other and answer each other's questions. You also have more access to me. And we kind of focus on the ongoing goal maintenance almost. Then I also have my course that I launched, Accelerate Your Goals, that part of this in Q3 is, or Q4 is going to be making that course available for purchase where you can just do it at your own pace. So if you've never participated in Accelerate Your Goals, you will have that opportunity at some point in Q4. I also started one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I also absolutely love. I did not think I was going to enjoy one-on-one -on -one time as much as I do. I, I'm just, cause I'm such an extrovert and a people person, I did not think I was gonna love it as much as I did. The negative part of one-on-one -on -one coaching is there's only so much time. I can only take on so many clients at one time because my time is limited. And so what I want to create is something in between the Patreon and the goal coaching. It's going to have the same kind of feel as the one-on-one -on -one that we're going to pick one goal for you to focus on. We're going to work together for eight weeks. There's going to be a curriculum. We're really going to like dig deep on figuring out how to accomplish that particular goal over the course of eight weeks together, but we're going to do it group style. That way more people can participate, but it's still gonna be very limited. I'm think right now I'm thinking like 10 people is about what I can fathom fitting into a weekly call because anymore, and we're not gonna have enough time to talk about each person's goals. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I will 100% be giving access to the Patreon community first. So if you are remotely interested in this goal coaching group program, join the Patreon community and more information will come. Um, I've already asked them actually for feedback about dates. So that's like the one big Q4 goal for Plan With Lincoln is to get this group coaching program, figure out exactly what all of the details are, the cost, and get that out and get everyone signed up so that we can kick it off. I think we're gonna kick it off the first week of January. So that's the big one for Plan With Lincoln. 
there is another plan with like a quarterly goal that I cannot share. Um, I know that that's awful. I know you're like, you, that's such a tease. But I wanted to be honest with you that I have eight goals and I have another plan with Lakin goal that I cannot tell you about yet. You will find out the first week of December. I will tell you right now. So it's two months, you gotta wait. But I will tell you as soon as I possibly can. The last two goals are both related to the category of things that make me happy. So the first one, surprise, surprise, is finishing up memory keeping. Finishing up 2021. I am going to be done with 2021 at the end of 2021. I'm just like, I'm making that statement. Even if I spend the whole last week of the year, like working on memory keeping, I don't want to go into the new year without, with like being behind. The other piece of this goal is figuring out what my 2022 plan is. I have a, a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings and um, I need to start thinking about it and start figuring out what I'm going to do in terms of memory keeping, if anything, for 2022. And then the last quarterly goal under things that make me happy is December daily. And this is one of those things that I feel like, do I really need to put it on my goals? This is gonna be my third year doing it. I feel pretty good about my system and staying on top of it. The reason that I'm putting it in my goals is because I also wanna do the classes leading up to it. And those things I don't find myself prioritizing if I don't put it in my power sheet. So the actual project, like the daily project in December, that's going to happen. Like I, I don't have doubt. I've already ordered the products. I don't have doubt that that's going to, that is a thing that I would prioritize, but the courses leading up to it, there are three this year. Well, one, they always have, and it's like December stories, telling stories in December, which I bought, I bought years ago and never did. And then they have two other courses that I've signed up for that are in November. And I want to complete those in October and November. So that is why it's, it is its own quarterly goal. So the actions are do the courses, organize my products, and then actually complete the project in December. So that is it. Those are my Q4 focuses. I feel like just this process of breaking down my annual goals into quarterly focuses really works for me. Something that you might consider as we go into 2022. And the thing I wanna make sure that you remember is you don't need to know all of it going into the new year. So if you're starting to think about your 2022 goals and you're like, but how on earth am I gonna come up with four quarterly goals for each goal? You don't need to know that at the beginning of the year. You don't even really need to know more than the first quarter. They will come to you. Ideals will come to you as you start to take action. So if you're like, I don't understand how you came up with those quarterly goals. I didn't come up with all of them in December of last year. They came to me as the year went on. And as, as I make progress or as I don't make progress, the quarterly goals shift with that situation. So that is what I've got going on this quarter. I'm so excited to bring you along. Also, the day that this video goes live is Power Sheets launch day. So if you did not check out my Power Sheets review video for the 2022 Power Sheets, check that video out and you can purchase your 2022 Power Sheets now. Uh, Friday's video will be my October action item. So I will be talking about all how I'm taking these quarterly goals and turning them into action steps for the month of October. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday focused on helping you achieve your goals. But I'm here to share you, but to, it is, there are way, I'm knocking things over.